to everything there is a season, we're told. And the time to mourn is one of those seasons. Indeed, I warrant every one of us watching this has had seasons when mourning was one of our primary activities. You know, they say that when we lose someone or something that we love, the depth of our mourning is intimately connected to the level at which they are interwoven into our lives. And so the more deeply connected to our daily lives that loss is, the more acutely we're gonna feel it. In a way, every time we love someone, we're opening the door for mourning the loss of that love. And yet what are our alternatives not to love? Clearly not. So this month we're reflecting about mourning and it's caused me to think about all of the seasons of mourning that I've lived through and each one of them is a unique flavor of mourning. I think that you've probably experienced this too. It's not that you learn, oh, this is how I mourn and then that's just how you do it. If you lose somebody that you love suddenly, it's a different level. If you lose somebody who's old and sick for a while, that's a different kind of mourning. If you lose somebody to suicide, grief and guilt are so interwoven, they're hard to separate. Every kind of mourning will have its own flavor. So I don't think there's any one size fits all for mourning. I'm constantly amazed myself by how nonlinear and irrational grief is. I had an experience, you know, the UUA headquarters which have been in the same building in Boston ever since I've been active, since the early 1900s actually. They recently sold that building and moved. And I found myself going through cycles of grief about that decision, which by the way, I think is a great decision and I love the new headquarters, but still doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I found myself being in Boston for one of my last trips to Beacon Hill, where the old office was thinking, I love Beacon Hill. Okay, fact check, I never loved Beacon Hill. It's got brick sidewalks, it's horrible to walk on in the winter, you have to be super rich to live there. I never loved it, but I'm walking along like, how could they leave Beacon Hill? And then it starts to get bigger. I find myself thinking, why didn't I live on Beacon Hill? I could have walked to work if I'd only lived on Beacon Hill. Again, fact check, because I couldn't afford it. A tiny little basement was like $900 there, right? And finally, finally, what stopped me with it is that I just started to laugh at myself. Actually, I just plain started cackling as I pictured myself being a completely different person, suddenly wanting to be well healed like a Boston Brahmin, the kind of people I never could even stand the five years I lived in Boston when I, all I wanted was to move out of Boston. No offense to people who love Boston. It's a great place for me to visit, but it was not a good fit. This is all to say that mourning takes us places we would never imagine going. Grief erupts, mourning comes through, and I think part of the idea with thinking about mourning specifically with our grief is how do we allow it? How do we give it space? How do we honor it? How do we set a place at the table and say, come on, mourning, this is part of our life. One thing that I've learned is that telling stories makes a huge difference in grieving, in mourning. One of the things that ministers love to do is tell the story of someone's life who has died. Because in doing that, we're honoring exactly who they were. In my ministry, I have told stories of stillborn babies. I have told stories of a hundred year old people who lived long and full lives, and I've told stories of everyone in between. And it's not just the stories of people who have died that we need to tell. When the UUA headquarters moved, lots of people needed to tell stories about the important things that had taken place in that old building. We needed to remember them. We needed to honor them. When relationships change or end, when job situations change. Right now, the seasons are changing. In Minnesota, we're turning towards the fall. And even though fall is my favorite season, and I love it, 
Still, I need to tell stories of this year's garden, what did and didn't happen. I need to honor the life of what is going by. One thing that I have found makes a difference for me is having someone really closely listen to that story. So I need to tell it, but I also need it to be heard. When I was in college, my best friend from high school died suddenly of a drug overdose. I was far away, I was across the country. I did not come back for the funeral. And I mourned it with people who didn't know her, who had never met her. I talked on the phone to people back at home, my parents. I heard about the funeral, but I never really had a chance to tell the story of her life and what it meant to me with other people. One of the gifts of social media is that I have reconnected with people that I knew in high school who I hadn't talked to really in decades. And on her birthday now, I post her picture every year and people who knew her mourn with me that she died so early and so soon. That is such a gift that I hadn't even known I was craving until it happened. And it was a gift of being connected through Facebook and Twitter and I'm grateful for it. In our community here, even though we are far flung around the world, I really hope that people will take time to share pictures and to tell stories of your own mourning, not just of people who have died who you miss, although certainly that, and we'll be honoring the dead in the last week of this month, but also of other things that you're grieving. Tell their story, tell it as if you're a preacher sharing the eulogy of your former marriage or of the child who did not become the adult that you thought they would for one reason or another, or of so many things that you're grieving. Right now, this year, I'm going into my final year with a high school senior who will be heading off, I don't know where, next year. And as major days go by, the first day of school, the birthday, that I think, I don't know next year how this will look and what it will be. I find myself honoring it and also beginning to move into the knowledge that next year will be different and to mourn even as I'm celebrating. May we allow ourselves the space for mourning, not just after someone has died, but every day in our lives. Because while to everything there is a season, and there are seasons which are devoted to mourning. Mourning is also part of life every day. May your joys and your sorrows be woven fine. May you stay centered in what is alive now without ignoring or forgetting what has been. And may this community be a place where you can be listened to with your stories of what you have loved and lost, always.